Hello there guys and welcome, welcome back to the channel. Now finally, after a tiny little bit of a hiccup on Kabam's Envy, I actually have champion spotlight. I don't want to be too mean to Kabam, but it's it's shifting in and eight out of phase of being comedic. How many things one company can mess up and uh, being unable to post the correct champion spotlight. That, that kind of says a lot, but either way, I wonder which intern is getting their head chewed off now. Right, uh, let's get to actual bar. So uh, she has gotten a prestige increase. It's still nothing too crazy, too special, but you know, it's good. She has a few new abilities, but largely I think the essence of the character will remain quite similar, which I actually don't have too much problems with. Now, this always active life siphon guillotine heals 2% of all damage taken by the opponent. The problem with that is, if your guillotine used to be awakened, you actually heal quite a bit more, especially if she was high sig. Now, it does seem like a very, very interesting heal that I definitely want to test out, but to put it in perspective, if you're going to be dealing opponent with uh, 100,000 health, then you're going to be healing up 2,000 health. So an average opponent of three, four hundred thousand health is going to be healing you up what? Six, eight, ten thousand health per fight. It's not bad, but it's definitely not, you know, Wolverine type of healing. Overall, I do like the idea of it. And we're going to have to see, you know, how potent it is. Because it does say all damage, it includes damage over time, and it could be very interesting, you know, in some matchups where you get damage multiplication, like damage increase nodes and stuff like that. So we're going to have to take a look how potent it actually is. But again, you can look at 2,000 health per, you know, 100,000 health done, or, you know, slightly more with recovery. So we'll see how effective, yeah. It actually is. Soul charge mechanics have been changed. Each time either champion loses 5% of their max health or is inflicted with a bleed effect, gain one soul charge. Now, that means that she is gaining soul charges significantly quicker now. Because previously it used to be when opponent loses 6% of their max health. It was saying nothing about her max health, which, for instance, every time you're going to be activating special attack due to recoil, you're going to be gaining soul charge and every time you inflict bleed and so on and so forth. So I do think that it's going to be significantly easier to keep the soul charges coming. Uh, first 10 soul charges are indefinite and the next five last 10 seconds each and you're capped at 15 stacks. Each soul charge grants 148 attack rating. Now that line I do like. That line I like a lot because she previously didn't have anything of the sort and if we compare that uh one second where is the spotlight you need to just double check on rank 565 so her attack is 2400 and with uh, 15 of those i think you'd be going to be getting close to like a hundred percent attack increase uh so well not quite maybe but it's still going to be a decent significant bump i do like that also, at 10 plus soul charge, Guillotine becomes unshackled, enhancing her special attacks um, until she's back below six charges. That unshackled thing actually is meh. <laughs> it is not uh, that, that, that great, I think. You know, it's going to be a random thing, but there aren't too many benefits. If you're unshackled, your specials are unblockable. If you're unshackled, you can spend, you know, Addition, 10 charges per special attack to gain bonuses on them. But let's move on. Critical hits. 35% chance to inflict de bleed debuff causing 1737.4 direct damage over 5 seconds. And then you get increase of plus 5% for each buff on the opponent. Now, if you compare to what abilities she have already right now, let's be fair, let's pick a 5 star rank 5. Critical hits. Critical hits, last rate opponents is 50% chance to inflict 2680 bleed damage of 4.1 seconds. So on their base, let's say 
how it's going to matter when you go up against Winter Soldier. So 15% less chance. And the bleed's also significantly weaker. The bleed used to be 2680, and now it's 1734 over 4.5 seconds, and this one's over 5. So the bleeds themselves on the base attacks are going to go down, and the chance to do that as well. But obviously, she does have a chance to increase that against champions with buffs. So we'll see how it works out. Let's go with heavy attack. 100% chance to inflict a 10 second bleed curse debuff. Okay, cool. Another debuff. An opponent with bleed curse suffers a bleed debuff causing 22, 33 direct damage over 5 seconds each time they're struck with a special attack. Uh, I want to know if that is for each special attack or each hit in a special attack and, you know, whether her special animations are changed or not because, you know, she still doesn't have the most amount of hits on specials. but. This should, in theory, be giving, you know, some more potent and juicy bleeds. Let's move on to Unshackled, as I said. So basically, when Unshackled comes in play at 10 plus souls, then your special attacks are unblockable. Cool. Special 1. Final hit has 100% chance to inflict a painling debuff lasting 10 seconds. While active, any non-physical damage taken by guillotine is also inflicted on the opponent as physical damage. Shackled spent 10 souls to apply an additional link debuff when launching the attack. Now, this will probably be quite annoying oh, while well, you're fighting her. Now, obviously, there will be champions that you can use to get around this ability because it's a physical damage, it's debuff that you can purify, and, you know, so on and so forth. But in general, I don't think there's going to be too much offensive use. But I do think that combined with her healing, there might be some very interesting interactions where, you know, the damage gets bounced back and forth and she gets to heal. And uh, it's going to be worth testing. It's going to be worth testing because if you can stack these up quite quickly and quite significantly, I think there might be some, a little bit of hidden cheese somewhere on some. Uh, of the more interesting notes. But we'll see whether it works out or not. Don't think it's going to be overly useful though. Because obviously there is no damage reduction to you yourself. And in pretty much every fight that you go in. Well opponents have significantly more health than you do. So you're going to be taking 10%. And it's going to, might be 1% of damage to them. Kind of thing. So we'll see. Special 2. Final hit has 100% chance to inflict Spectre debuff for 10 seconds, reducing regeneration rate by 200%. You know, and spend 10 souls to pause the Spectre for 10 seconds, so you basically have the Spectre be 20 seconds long. Cool. That, that's basically more or less the idea of her special 2 now. Special 3. 100% chance to inflict a degeneration debuff causing 1700 direct damage over three seconds, then consume all soul charges to increase the degeneration duration by three seconds for each soul spent this way. This is significant downgrade on a special three. A special three used to be one of the most powerful things in the game, to be fair, because it dealt damage based on opponents' total health. There are very few abilities in game to do that, and this is not even close to as good of a special attack. Signature ability, huh? When the opponent is immune to Guillotine's personal bleed effects, she has a up to 100% chance to inflict matching Rupture debuff, causing physical damage. This Rupture debuff grants one soul charge. And that will be very important to see how this sig ability scales. Because, uh, SIG 200, she's going to have 100% chance. I want to know what chance she's going to have at SIG, you know, 20, 40, 60, or whatever. It, it's very nice. I like the idea that, in theory, there's pretty much nothing giving you, no one immune to rupture debuffs in the game. So, you know, you would be able to use her in many different scenarios where you can't now. But that would require, more than likely, quite high SIG 
pending of this ability scales. When it comes to synergies, there's absolutely nothing of any interest whatsoever. So, what do I think about the buff? Well, the first, I do think that her healing actually is going to be weaker. I think she has an amazing healing if she's awakened right now, and I pe people really underestimate it. The souls of her ancestors and power agility in further granting a 10% chance to steal 20 to 54.99 of damage done as health for every four souls she possesses. In longer fights, you can, or with a high sig, you can get really, really good amount of heal going. How will this heal for that one? I don't know, but I'll record a video to demonstrate the amount of heal guillotine has right now. Because I already can expect everybody making videos and raving about this new heal without talking about how it used to be. Then, another thing to note. The bleeds. Potency has been reduced. So has the damage. And so has the chance to inflict them in any matchup where opponent has less than three buffs. I don't know why, but you know. So I do think she's going to have weaker heal. And the base chance to inflict bleeds has been also reduced. Level 2 does exactly the same thing that it used to do, except you can increase the duration now and you don't have to consume two souls, but you're going to be consuming 10 if you use that shackled thing. Level 1, I think, is going to be relatively inconsequential. And for that matter, she looks like a champion where you're just going to want to go to level 3s. Or at least, it looks like that to me. Because in any matchup where you don't care about reversing heal, in this special attack, you know, doesn't seem to be doing too much. And special 3 is weaker than it was, which was her best thing. And now... The fact that she has access to Rapture and Bleeding in matchups obviously is a huge win. Everything else about the character... I don't know. It really has to be seen how it goes in the game. Now, the fact that she gains attack and she will gain souls easier, I do like, obviously. But if we're real, we're like absolutely honest about it. She has gained... No utility aside from Rapture Debo, which is admittedly useful, whereas you can use her now against Bleed Immune Champions if she's high sick or you couldn't before. But the thing is, before you just didn't. But okay. Does she do really anything that she didn't before? As in nullify, prevent await, prevent miss, or you know. I don't think she does. I also do think that her healing is going to be weaker than it was before. It does seem that in any matchup where critical hits, uh, sorry, where opponent doesn't have a ton of buffs, her chance to bleed is going to be weaker on basic attacks. Obviously, you have guaranteed bleeds and specials, which is nice. But the fact that they reduce the amount of bleed damage is too great. And as far as it goes, as little description she had in all her abilities, I'm not sure she's even better off than used to be. You know, that Spectre debuff. You used to consume two souls to play Suspector for 10 seconds. Now you're either... <laughs> now you can consume 10 souls to place it for 20 seconds. Special one didn't have any text at all whatsoever, but, you know, I don't think that much has changed offensively, but... Special 3 is going to be significantly weaker in vast majority of the scenarios. Bleed don't seem to be doing much damage. Much better. I don't know. I don't know. 
I will do some testing. But it's really hard to tell right now whether she's going to be any good. And again, we can think about whether will she be able to do anything she doesn't do now? No. Besides the Rapture Debo, she actually does less. I think she used to heal more. Uh, I think the bleeds were stronger in a generic matchup. I think she still can and will only really be kind of like effectively used for heal reversal. Do you think level one does anything? Not really. Uh, I don't know. I know it's very easy to fall in love with new abilities. But if we take a look at the strengths here that are listed here, high damage potential. She already did that, especially when synergized out. Buff heavy opponents, really, just so you bleed them slightly better than before. Uh, and, you know, her ability is bleed. Cool, she had that. Bleed curse is effectively just still bleed. Spectre, she already had that. Degeneration, she used to have something better than degeneration. I don't want to write off this buff, but I also don't see a purpose for this character aside from dealing damage. In which case, you know, I, I drank up Hella or Cosmic Ghost Rider or whoever, because they do that and they do more. What more besides bleeds and dealing damage this champion does? I don't know. From the looks of it, to me, I know it makes Jabari Panther look like, you know, extremely versatile champion, and she isn't. We'll see how it works out. Let me know what you guys think, and I will catch you guys soon. See ya. Hello there, guys, and welcome back to the channel. So, we have all the information about...